A lot of people end up working fast food jobs after university because they believe that doors are going to open because the degree is given to them. They get this message from their parents. They get this message from the matrix, the media. They're sold this dream that you're going to come out of university with a degree and everybody's going to want to hire you and you're going to, you know, you're going to be a high value member of society that's going to just jump into this 75 grand a year, $100,000 a year job, but you won't. And that's not what's going to happen. Take one university. You went to university, didn't you? How many students passed in your year? Do you know a graduation? Guess. I don't know the size of your 30, university. 30,000 students in a year passed at your, at your university alone. Maybe 10,000. Let's say 10,000. How long ago since you graduated? 10 years? Eight years. No, no, that's four or five. Four or five years. That's 50,000 people have walked out of the door of the same building you went to in Texas with these pieces of paper saying, hire me, I'm worth millions of dollars per year. I'm worth hundreds of thousands per year. I'm worth at least six figures. 50,000 people from that one building you went to. How many universities are in the USA? I challenge somebody to do this math. How many students graduate with a university degree every single year in all of the top universities? Okay, fine. How many universities are there in the United States? How many new degrees, how many new pieces of paper are printed every single year for everybody to walk out of these buildings and wave around at employers saying, I'm worth all this money? Take that number and divide it by the number of jobs in the United States that even pay six figures. The number of jobs in the United States that even pay you $100,000 a year, which by the way, is still broke. And you'll see the glaringly obvious scam that traditional education is. Universities used to be prestigious. You used to have to be smart to go to university. Now, any idiot can go to university. You can buy a degree, even if you're unintelligent. Universities used to be for the intelligent, the smart, the industrious. And they would go there and get their degree. And they'd be rare in society. The man walking around, yeah, I have a university education. People used to brag about having somebody like that in their family. And universities used to actually mean something. However, once it became clear that there was a big business here, a big racket here, that the banks were happy to fund all the students going there and pay you all your money, universities sprung up everywhere. You could do universities online from your house. And all these people are printing these degrees every year, which are utterly meaningless. There is a trick that I could tell young men that will help them close business deals, help them get girlfriends, help them make friends, help them get into the circles that they want to get into. And it's a stat, I guess, of yourself that you can expand throughout your entire life and you should never stop expanding it. And that would be general knowledge. General knowledge is super important because I remember I was sitting with one of the sheikhs in Dubai and... He had, there was no alcohol at this house, of course. It was a dinner event. And they start passing around this, this wood that you, you burn and you smell the scent coming off the wood. And I knew exactly how it was made and how it was cultivated. If you don't find it in the wild, which is very hard nowadays because it's all extinct, you have to drill certain holes into these trees and infect the trees with a certain type of mold and wait for the wood to go petrified. And I was explaining this process to him, which he already know, but he was super impressed that I understood this part of Arabic culture and what this product was exactly. And general knowledge will always impress people. I can sit down with most people and have a conversation about most topics regardless of what it is, there's something that I will know about it. And as a young man, there's no reason to just, if you like sales and internet marketing, only read about that. Spend your spare time learning about things that you don't think are particularly useful. Maybe spend your spare time learning about things that you right now have no business knowing. Yachts, the different, the different brands and makes of private jet. Learn all of this. Because when you start to sit with important people, you can at least have an idea of what they're talking about and interject in the conversation, perhaps with something they don't know. And that has made me more friends and more connections with men, women, businessmen, anyone who I was trying to get connected to than maybe anything else, general knowledge. You have to work on it. See, I like audiobooks. And even right now, you say you don't see me learning things. I am four hours into a 17 hour audiobook course lectures on the Vikings and Norse mythology and Norse history. Why? So the last two hours when I was in my room, I was listening to it. So you don't see me learning this stuff, but I just find so many things interesting that I will make sure that instead of listening to music or, or doing other things, I'm, I'm filling my brain with information. So every day I'm learning something new. I don't think a day goes by when, when I don't learn something new from somewhere. But yeah, going down rabbit holes is always very interesting on the internet. 
if you find an interesting fact out about something, then read up more. I mean, Wikipedia is a tremendous resource. Everyone's forgotten about it. It's because it's kind of fallen out of fashion, I think. But it is a tremendous resource. And when it comes to history and battles and world leaders and things like that, there are literally clickable links from each page to the next page to the next page. And you could sit and read and learn entire eras of history or entire 20 year periods in an hour or two, if you are determined enough. And this information is maybe not useful for making money and maybe not useful in the long run. But if you impress someone like me, who you're trying to do business with, with your knowledge on something that I find interesting, then I'm going to like you more and I'm more likely to sign the contract. Fighting is a worthwhile hobby and it was something I did and I consumed God knows how many hours of my youth punching punch bags and punching other people. It's very useful because it's something that you carry around with you everywhere you go. Everywhere I go, I know how to fight. If I get in a problem or an argument or a confrontation, I know how to fight and it's something that I never lose. So yeah, fighting is a very good hobby. It makes you harder to kill. It's probably, I think, one of the highest return on investment hobbies that young men can possibly do. Get yourself down to a local boxing gym and learn how to fight, absolutely. I think that it doesn't teach you any massive lessons. I think that you're a lot more aware of how tough you aren't. I think that men overestimate their physical capabilities and their ability to do well in a fight pr probably by a thousand times. Like everyone thinks they'll be fine in a fight. Everyone thinks they'll just, they have this fantasy that they can just beat people up. But fighting is actually incredibly, incredibly difficult. And when you really know how to fight, it makes you more paranoid because you understand how unrealistic these scenes where, you know, scenes in movies where a guy's beating up five different people. Unless you're Steven Seagal, this is unrealistic stuff. So it makes you a lot more paranoid because I'm aware that if someone sucker punches me from behind and his friend starts stomping on my head, it doesn't matter how much kickboxing I know. So when you know how to be violent and you know how easy it is to hurt people and to knock them out, you understand also how fragile you are as a person and you stop overestimating yourself in terms of what you can do in a fight like most men do. Not knowing how to conduct yourself, uh, drinking too much to a point of inebriation is a big red flag. You know, if you ever start stumbling or slurring your speech, you know, there's a time and a place for that. But usually that's a big red, big red flag for women, especially if you're out on dates. Um, for me, I will judge men harshly on bad driving. If a man doesn't check his mirrors and he's not moving his car properly, I judge people on bad driving. Again, bad language, uh, using too much slang when you're supposed to be in a professional setting. Knowing the difference between a casual and a professional setting is very important. It's not just the language somebody use, uh, uses because the language I'll use with my friends is very different to the language I'll use on a Zoom call with a multi-billionaire businessman. So it's knowing the time and the place for certain types of behavior because as men, we can all be childish and we can all be juvenile, but you have to be able to distinguish one from the other. And there's people who I've met who certainly don't know how to present themselves to somebody, even somebody like myself, who's who's wealthy and they're trying to pitch me this business out of the idea. They show up and they're acting as though we're two friends down the pub, even though I don't know them. That's a huge red flag. You know, they should at least make the effort to try to come across as refined as possible. And if they're incapable of doing it or incapable of spotting a situation where they should be doing it in, then it's probably not the kind of person that I'd want to do business with, network with, be friends with. I would say, yeah, absolutely. Get a commission only sales job. Get a sales job that offers you no basic salary because it teaches you lots of things. One, the art of sales and closing the deal and actually bringing money in is very important. But two, it teaches you work ethic and hunger. Because when I worked commission only sales jobs, it was a matter of, I'm not going to eat unless I sell these windows. And, you know, I'd take a three hour drive down to whichever house I was going to give the presentation in. I'd sit there, stare in the mirror, splash some water on my face snap into sales mode, knock on the door and then make my presentation. And I was very, very good. And yeah, sales is a skill that Andrew and I have even to this day, but you have to understand absolutely everything from the camera that's recording me to the chair I'm sitting on to this wooden paneling. There's always, there's somebody in every single company that makes everything that is somehow in charge of sales and marketing. So just think about things. Think about the items around you in the room. Think about the items you use every day. When you go and buy something, why did you buy it? Why did you buy it? And who convinced you to buy it? You could be ordering a coffee from Starbucks. Why? Why are you ordering the coffee from Starbucks? Who behind the desk of Starbucks HQ all those years ago sat and came up with the strategy that made you know what the brand is about and, and go there and actually buy their coffee? Obviously, boycott Starbucks, but that's just an example. But think about it when you buy things. Think about your reason for buying them. And then your mind will start thinking a lot more like a salesman. 
Yeah, if you're if you're leaving university or high school, sales is definitely the field you should get, get into. It's the field you should get into because no matter what you learn and no matter what skill set you actually develop on top of sales, you have to convince people to use your product or service one way or another. Andrew and I are very good at sales, but anything you learn inside of the real world even, whether it be AI content creation, that's all well and good and you could be the best in the world. But if you can't convince people, if you can't convince people to use your service and actually pay you money to do the things that you're good at, then it doesn't matter. It's all for nothing. So you should definitely, definitely get into sales. There's no correct answer for which accent is acceptable and which one isn't. However, some accents are better than others, which is a shame because you can't really control your accent. However, regardless of what your accent's like and what your speaking voice is like, you can always tell the intelligence behind somebody's accent, depending on the language they use, the vocabulary they use, the vernacular they use, the way they pause, the way that they take their time when putting thoughts together, the way they intonate their words. So I know very smart people who are Chinese, Nigerian, Indian, who do speak with their heavy accent. However, you know that there's a brain behind that accent. So if you're lucky enough to be born with a British or maybe an American accent and you're not using your voice to your full potential, it's one of those instances where you'll always get outpaced by somebody who's more obsessed than if you're born with natural talent. So if you're born with a BBC British accent, which I don't quite have, but I guess that would be the top rank of accents in the world, in my opinion. You know, if there's an Indian guy who can sell more than you and do more business than you and close more deals than you, despite the fact that his accent is a disadvantage, that's just because he works harder than you. So make sure that you do work on your vocabulary. Download stupid apps, word of the day. Read 20 new words a day and, and read what they mean, learn their, learn their definitions, try to include them into your everyday vocabulary. Yeah, you're really doing yourself a huge disservice if you don't try to maximize your speaking voice. The best way to cultivate your voice besides expanding your vocabulary to me would be reading out loud. Take a book that you like or a book that isn't something very simple, no children's books, obviously, and read them out loud. It's an exercise that everyone used to have us doing in school. We probably don't understand why our teachers used to make us do this. However, the way that stories are written and the way that people speak in books and the way that sentences are put together, you can tell how it's supposed to be read. You can tell you're not supposed to just zoom through all the words like you do in your head when you're mentally reading it. So literally read it out loud. You can imagine how these characters are speaking to each other. You can imagine how they're trying to convey themselves, whether it be a sad moment of the book, uh, an action packed part of the book, uh, you know, uh, somber, happy. It doesn't matter. You know what the characters are feeling at the time. So read out loud. And then when you find yourself speaking with your friends, if you find yourself talking really fast, and you know, you're, you're, uh, you're umming and ahhing and you can't get your words together like this, then slow the fuck down. Slow down. Think of what you want to say before you say it and try to convey it in a very articulate, compendious way. If you look at life like a video game, anything that increases one of your stats is a worthwhile hobby. I think that playing chess will make you more intelligent, helps your critical thinking. Reading books makes you more interesting and more knowledgeable. Any type of sport or physical training makes you stronger, fitter, better looking. It's going to make you live longer. So whatever hobby you want to pursue and whatever you want to do, just make sure it's something that makes you better as a person. I mean, I know young men who make jewelry, who make knives. You know, that's a, that's a very productive hobby because it's a, it's a business that they're training themselves up to do. Just try to avoid things like video games because video games actually increase nothing. They help you in no way at all. I would argue that they probably make you less healthy, more lazy. It depends on the setting that you're talking about. If you're setting yourself amongst high value men and you want to seem more gentlemanly, then certainly cutting out foul language in the way you speak is the way. The one trick, I say trick, I guess the one trait and the one behavior I like is if somebody is getting up or leaving a table to stand up yourself, and also when anyone wants to greet you or to shake your hand, whether it be male or female, never do it sitting down. If a man comes over to me and uh, is about to walk over and sit at my table, I'll never shake his hand sitting down. I'll never say hi to a woman and give her a half hug sitting down. You always stand up, look the man in the eyes and shake his hand, or you stand up, look at the woman in the eyes, give her a kiss on both cheeks. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's one, depending on what country you're from, but never ever greet people from your seat. That is a number one red flag. And also it's one of the most important because it's usually people's first impression of you. I don't know where you're watching this video, but it might not be around forever. 